What's up YouTube, it's Corman with another Alchemy Lawyer Pro X tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about the Alchemy Sequencer, still in that LFO and modulation area to be very specific. And the Sequencer is something that has been seen, you know, the synths, but just very slightly. Today I'm just going to show the Alchemy version. And having said that, if this is the first video that you see in my channel or from my series, and you like this, please, I invite you to subscribe, like or dislike, comment and share with other people so I can get my work across to more people because I know at least somebody is going to find this helpful, same as you that are already subscribed to my channel. And if you want to see my other work in writing, beat making and all that stuff, then make sure that you visit any of the other contacts that I have at the bottom of the video in that graphic and let's just jump right into Lawyer Pro X. I hope that this is a quicker video, one of those and this is the sequencer already been dealing with this whole modulation uh, section here. We're very close and near, nearing the end of covering the whole thing. I have already went through the LFO and the HDSR multi-segment. And now we're gonna talk about the sequencer. The sequencer, as you can see there, is a programmable step-based modulator. And if you have ever worked with any step-based um, sequencer for drums and that type of thing, this should look familiar or from other programs. So this is a step-based modulator with patterns up to 128 steps and these are usually synchronized with the tempo in this version of alchemy no matter what you do we'll get to a little bit more detail in a few the level groove and swing and envelope of each step can be controlled globally for the pattern which would be this whole thing that you see here or per step which is each one of them that are numbered Going through the controls rather quickly, the current, this is something that all of the graphic based modulators have. A sequencer is no different. The, I only have one available. As usual, you can go to show target and try to find where that it's being used. It's not assigned to anything right now. And there's a few ways of telling. There's no actual no control that has that orange around it down here and the show target doesn't show me that the modulation I, uh, for the sequencer the step sequencer is active to anything so that's a um, quick way of telling if it's there but the current was going to let you just see whatever is the current selected step sequencer parameters that you have right now one is going to be the default if you have anything and you can have up to 16 of them same as with the other modulators now here we have this trigger button this is similar to other trigger settings that i've shown so far here for modulation which is when it's on it will play the pattern again with with each note and when it's off it will play the pattern simultaneously or continuously so this is dependent on the pattern that you have. If it's on, you're going to restart it off. It's just going to play continuously with every note pressed. I know to make here is that the sequencer would always will be synced with the tempo, regardless if the trigger setting is on or off. So that's different from the other modulators that I've shown. You're always going to be in sync and that's because you're dealing with steps and it's dealing with beats and beat rates. And I don't mean beat rates as the sound quality, but beats, rates of beats. And having said that, here is that guy that means or that represents that rate for a beat, which is just the rate selector, this pop up menu. It's called formally the rate or duration pop-up. And what this gives you is this 
list of every um, fraction or beat available in a bar. This is nothing new as far as uh, what you can select here, but what this is probably going to do is just set the duration of every step in the sequencer pattern and it's ex expressed as a fraction of a beat. So if I have a, well, let me go to the next one so that because they, they're tied together, this value snap, again, it has this um, uh, beat fraction. And what this does is quantize the sequencer step values and it's gonna limit them to exact fractions of the available range. For example, if you have a setting of one half, this has this will align the bars to 0%, 50%, and 100% when you drag them vertically, you see? So it's the same type of functionality when you're dealing with the rate or duration. If you have a, a bar or a, a sequence that is uh, has a duration of half a bar, and then you set this setting to anything, what the pattern is going to play is a fraction of that half a bar. So whatever you have selected here is going to be applied as a fraction of the actual duration in bars or beats, however you want to call it. So it's a, they have kind of the same functionality, but just wanted to uh, discuss the two separately and then let you experiment by yourself. Then the very next one, you have this uh, edit mode. So this edit mode pop-up, what it's gonna do is choose one of the three edit modes that's available and whatever choice you make is gonna affect how the step sequencer and the step editor, as it's probably called, it's it, it looks and how it behaves. So the with a setting of value, we have, we're seeing this and I'm gonna do some edits at the end, just some quick ones. But what value does is just um, give you a view and edit the value of each step in the pattern. That's what's gonna let you do. If I uh, change that view to length, then what that's gonna do, it's let you view and edit the length of each step in the pattern. So a note to make here is that technically you create a pattern of longer and shorter envelope shapes with this setting. Now with swing, what you're gonna do and see how now that's a drastic change because it's, I'm not uh, actually editing the envelope of that sound. I just wanna see if I wanna create some swing, which I can in the same way. And I have it snapped then half a bar. That's why I did that. If I have it off, I can just go freely up and down. So I can introduce a swing to each of the steps in, in in a percentage. So you are creating variations of the timing of those steps. So it's gonna create a proper swing uh, effect. Notice that there's already a, another swing setting in there. We're gonna get that to that just in just a second because the next button that I wanted to cover real quick is just a file, nothing Nothing really uh, groundbreaking here. You have pretty much the same thing as what you have with the other guys. Uh, you have a f setting, uh, a set of commands that are gonna let you uh, either load a preset, save some of the parameters you make and add it to the preset, copy some of the, for example, to from let's say one they have uh, in the current, I have some parameters, I can copy them and go to five if I had one and paste them. You can clear them and make them default. You can put some randomization and you can also import some settings. Like if I go to import velocity, it's just gonna bring me to the disk. If I have some MIDI information, so step, step sequencing information, I can load it right into this step sequencing of Archimy. So pretty self-explanatory. And now I'm going down to this knobs, these parameters. We have the swing knob, that's a bit of first one. 
and that's just gonna adjust the timing to create swing effects but this is at the level where you have already defined your envelopes and your step sequence you can add an extra swing to the whole pattern same uh, with the attack you're gonna set the attack time if you don't know what attack is by this point please I suggest that you go back and watch one of my first videos where I talk about envelopes and attack and gates and releases and all that or if you don't want to do that just Google it because I'm not gonna cover it in detail that much gate what that's gonna do is gonna set the whole time of each of the notes press so when you reach the peak at the attack phase you can uh, also set the timing that you're going to be holding that peak level of the attack and the release will be the opposite of the attack it's just going to set that fall from that peak until you get to zero that time for each step for them to reach that release phase then as i said to the right you have your step editor that's what it is. This here is the, your step editor, and you uh, are going to be seeing, right? There's going to be a visible window that's going to show you all the parameters you have. And some of these are going to, right, like the rate and the value snap, what they're going to do is change the interaction coupled with the edit mode. It's going to show you what you see here. You can also if you have a lot of steps there, remember you can go to 128, as I said in the beginning, you can scroll and, and zoom and, and all that stuff, okay? So now I'm just gonna change some parameters real quick. And first of all, I need to assign this sequencer. Let's see where, I only have sources A and B. Let's, let's play what we have already. See the step sequencer is going through the steps, but it's not assigned to anything. It's not modulating anything. Maybe, uh, let's see. Let's, let's modulate the tuning of C. Let's, let's, let's do that. Let's sequencer one. Just change that a little bit. That, that sounds nice. You see the, the different already gave it and you can kind of um, like shape like if you had a pencil like when you're doing automation this is good because you can go real quick and, and do that you can add more steps by dragging this button here but it won't matter in this uh, exercise because my meeting information you can see stops there at step number 14 so whatever i add after i won't reach unless my notes let me go all the way to there actually i'm gonna yeah increase the gate uh, put some swing change some parameters malus snap doesn't matter to me now maybe I'm gonna go here make it very fine 164 look at that it's obviously gonna have that effect right it's a much smaller fraction of a beat so it's gonna go faster if I make it bigger It almost doesn't even go through the pattern. And just a simple modulation of the tuning of one source gave me a completely different type of sound that I can use as, as a padding for that same pattern that I have. And I can use it to thicken up some some of the sounds and give it some variation and even some automation effects in, embedded into the sequencing pattern 
that I created there just quickly by uh, changing some stuff around and just kind of drawing in, in, on top of it. So with that, I'm going to leave you for now. And in the next video, we're going to keep talking about the rest of the modulation options that Alchemy offers before we go into the perform section, which I'm looking forward to because I want to get to that as soon as possible. So thanks for the support. See you in the next video. Peace out, YouTube.